Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan. <laughs> this is Felicia. Uh, today we have our friend. Yeah, yeah. friend back. Uh, his name is Ron Edward and he is running for Assembly, uh, California Assembly. Can you briefly introduce yourself a bit and uh, tell us where uh, your district is? Yes, uh, Ethan and Felicia, once again, it is a blessing to be here with you guys, uh, spreading the good word that we're, the work that we're doing. Um, my name is Ron Edwards, and, and uh, I'm running for the California State Assembly. It's district number 60. It's 14 cities in my district. Um, it's in Riverside County. All 14 cities are in Riverside County. Uh, it's Moreno Valley, Paris, Hemet, San Jacinto, uh, Riverside, Beaumont, Redlands. I have some homeland and Roma land. I have Menifee, and I have all the way south as Winchester. If you're in that area, please go vote for this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. like living nearby, be a volunteer for him. <laughs> yeah, uh, and today we want to get a little personal with you mm. because we we heard what you're gonna do in our government very soon. We want to know uh, your story, your faith story. How you get into uh, know our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, how you become a minister? Yes, uh, Ethan. Uh, I tell you, God is good, you guys, and I know you know that God is good, and God has a plan, and God has a purpose for every single person's life. It doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter if uh, your parents were divorced. It doesn't matter if they uh, it was a single parent. Um, it doesn't matter how you got here. God has a plan for you, and God can use anyone and anybody. The Word of God says, that if we don't cry out and praise him, he'll have the rocks do it. If, if, if we don't give the message to the people we're supposed to, he'll have a donkey or jackass tell, some, tell someone. These are things that actually happen in the word of God where uh, God is in total control. That's what we always have to remember. And, and Ethan and Felicia, it is a blessing for me to have lived my life uh, putting God first. We have to put God first. Um, I got 40 years married. I got 38 years federal government service, United States Army, United States Postal Service. My son graduated straight A student, calculus two, physics two. He's majoring in computer science at a major university. Uh, I've been serving the Lord, Ethan and Felicia, since I was 22. By no means am I perfect. But one thing when you, when, as Christians, we have to talk to people and we have to communicate truth to them. So when we're communicating with people, it's a perfect thing. It's perfect. There's no blemishes in it. It is absolutely perfect because it's God's word and not our word. So one of the first things I remember uh, having to kind of change in my life uh, is that when I talk to people, they understand, man, you're, what you're saying is like perfect. So their response was, well, you're not perfect. And what I had to really learn real quick is when I talk to people, I have to like, I tell them I'm not perfect before they say I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but guess who is perfect? God is perfect. God's word is perfect. So as I communicate truth and God's word and his love to people, I let them know I'm not perfect. I'm just a human being. I'm a man. I got many flaws. I got many things that's wrong with me. But God's word is perfect. So when you communicate God's word, they're hearing that and they can feel that and they can feel God's perfect peace, his perfect love, those those instructions that come from a father. And I'm not perfect. So it's, it's a wonderful thing to just be a vessel, an earthen vessel. Man, I like chocolate chip cookies so I could have a container. That container could be beat up. It could be cut up, have bruises on it. But inside. Those cookies are still good. And so uh, that's how God's word is. We're just vessels. We're, we're, we're got cuts and nicks. We got problems with us. But when they reach inside and see that God is inside, the good thing, the Bible says he's sweeter than honey, more sweeter than the honeycomb. So it's not the container. It's not the vessel, us. It's God that's important. So I've been serving the Lord, Ethan and Felicia, since I was uh, 22 years old. And uh, I tell you, it, it's a beautiful thing to serve the Lord. Yeah, you, you talk like a pastor, sound like a pastor. <laughs> yeah, you talk like a pastor, sound like a pastor. He is a pastor, yeah. not, not like 
he is a pastor. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you can tell that it's twenty-two years of experience. You know, you you just put this guy on the stage. He can talk straight <laughs> for two hours. You know, that's pastor. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a pastor. I, I I'm not in the physical position anymore, but I've been an associate minister, pastor. I've been a, a senior pastor. Uh, so uh, in our in our in our uh, families, we have pastors. My wife is a PK. Uh, her her father was a, a bishop um, in a church of God of prophecy. Uh, her brother right now is an international uh, bishop overseer uh, of a lot of churches in big area. So we come from a uh, ministry. Uh, one thing, Ethan and Felicia, we have problems not just outside the church. Um, mm -hmm. Satan has actually attacked us from inside the church. So we have everything that's going on outside the church is happening inside the church. So all the DEI, all the critical race theory, mm -hmm. all the racist talk, uh, all of that stuff is in, it's in seminaries, just like it's at Columbia, just like it's at New York University. Uh, so UCLA, USC, it's, it's, it's a cancer and it's spreading everywhere. One thing I always tell people uh, when they talk about racism, reverse racism is racism. So what they're doing is they doing reverse race. Oh, white people were racist against us for all these years. And now they become racist. So if you have reverse racism, you are just as racist as the person you're trying to identify. Yeah, amen to that because you know that that's very ridiculous. Like people talking about DEI, right? Those uh, LGBTQ activists, they always say, "Oh, we're pro DE, DEI, you know, inclusion or something." But you know, once we went to the Chino Chino Valley School District, we were there to oppose the agenda for putting the LGBTQ books in the school library, and there's a bunch of like LGBTQ activists. And you, you know what they say to us? The, the most inclusion people in this world, they, they told us, go back to where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, oh, yes, you are very inclusion. I can see the DEI works so well that you, you are, you, you're telling me that go back to where I came from. Oh, that's very inclusive. <laughs> so America is so inclusive. Yeah, yeah. So inclusive. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, okay. That, that's very ridiculous. And what we were believing in this yeah <laughs> and it and it goes it goes against the very principles of america and what i tell people felicia uh, american principles are conservative principles conservative principles are christian principles so if you're a christian you should be you are conservative there it's amazing how you talk to people when you really get down to brass tacks and you talk they're conservative but yet they're voting for Democrats, who is just the opposite of conservative, American, and Christian. Those, those are principles that we have to establish, and we have to cultivate, and we have to nurture, and we have to bring those things up. And, and young people, I am so happy to be here because you guys are, are, the, are the hope for tomorrow, you and Ethan, uh, Felicia. And so it is a blessing for me to be here because what you guys are doing is what we need to have done. A uh, family cannot uh, survive if you don't have babies. You gotta have babies. And that's why we talked about family before. Those things are very necessary. And what I tell, tell women, and I put out there to men too, I say, thank God for strong women. Strong women. Strong women are not afraid to have babies. You think about all the mothers in the world. The only reason they're mothers is because they were strong women that decided to have a child. You know, I think about what time we're living in, and, and man, he'll talk to you with all this psychology Wait, and all know. this uh, intellectuality, and they'll almost think like, oh, I would have done something different if I lived in Jesus' day, or I would have did something different if I lived in Moses' day. No, you're doing the same thing they did when they were saying, uh, crucify Jesus and let right. us have Barabbas. You, you're doing the exact same thing. And what I tell people, Felicia and uh, Ethan, I say, listen, the people today are, are, would tell Mary, they would advise her not to have Jesus because she was in that situation where a lot of young women are today, uh, except for she didn't sin, though. She was blessed by God. But they would have advised her to have an abortion 
with Jesus. And what's happening in society, a lot of these babies that are in these situations, their moms are in these situations, they're going to be the ones that have the answers for our society the same way Jesus is the answer for all of man's problems. That's great. Yeah, and you know, like you answered my question for these months because I, I was thinking about having babies. We even made two episodes about like having babies, you know. And I was asking, yeah, I was asking him. I said, "What's the good for having children?" Because I know I read the Bible. I know God. Uh, want us to have children, right? And we'll see nowadays, like the society, Muslims, they give birth to a lot of babies, and they came to the U.S. and they try Minneapolis. They now like they are broadcasting the Muslim prayer like five times a day, and you know, like they turn those cities turn to、uh, the Muslim cities. And I say, yeah, I I get it. Like you know, like. When Christian they give birth to a lot of babies, and we can like overturn this situation. We can overturn like we have bunch of like hardcore Christians, and we're like powerful or something. I get it, but I was like struggling. Oh, because when you have babies, you gotta give up a lot of your own time. You gotta give up a lot of things. But what what you say very. Like it、yeah. convinced me, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, I now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we and we need that. We need strong women. We need、right. strong women. W- one thing I, I would say when I was talking to people, I say men, men have always been, you know, knuckleheads. Men have always been, you know, doing things they shouldn't do. But the women, the women would like civilize them. They, the <laughs> woman would calm them down. The, the woman. Would be make the home and get him out the street. It, it starts with your mom, but then it continues with your wife, and then it continues with your daughter. See, and then the cycle begins again. Then your、right. your daughter gets married. She becomes a mother. Then she has a daughter, and then that daughter go and you keep that cycle going on. So all of us, no matter who we are, we can always look to our mothers. We can always look to our mothers. You look in the Old Testament. The people, the children of Israel, they told Moses. They say we don't want to talk to God. <laughs> you know, when things go bad, I want to talk to mom. I don't want to talk to my dad. You know, because <laughs> God has the law.、Uh, God will open up the earth and swallow you.、Uh, God is—it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God.、Um, he's alive. His His word. He He means His word. When He says something, He He means it. The the Holy Spirit,、uh, I mean, it really comes in and tempers. It tempers the strong metal.、Uh, it makes it flexible.、Uh, not just、uh, it gives mercy and, and and God's mercy and His grace, and we we feel that as human beings. And then because His mercy and grace, we extend that same mercy and grace to other men, other women, other people, and children of God. And so I'm I'm just glad to be a Christian. And one thing about being a Christian, Felicia and Ethan, I realized this as a young person, a young, and then a young minister.、Uh, not everybody knows Jesus for being real. In your walk with Christ, you have to get to the place where you know that Jesus is real. So somebody out there might be saying, "Well, what are you talking about,、uh, Candidate Ron Edwards? What are you? Jesus is real." Well, it's kind of like the disciples meeting. And Thomas wasn't there, so Thomas he he had to understand that Jesus is real, and so so Thomas had to come. He's like, well, I ain't gonna believe because until I put my hands in his side, I got I gotta touch him, I gotta I gotta feel him. I want I want to make sure he's real. And so in your faith walk and and and, and, and following Christ, every believer. Has to get to the point where they understand that Jesus is real, not to my mother, not to my father, not to my sister, not to my brother, but He's real to me.、Mm-hmm. So when I talk about Him, I can see Him, I can feel Him, I know He's real. Amen. That that is great. Well, you seem to you obviously have a lot of experience.、Um, what do you see? What's wrong with the church? Uh, in America, in California, 
because the church has become weaker and weaker, and uh, there are less and less people, especially young people, attending church. The study says it's like 30% less. And then uh, once kids go to college, it's almost like o- only like 20% of them come back to church. What do you think is wrong with American churches and uh, how do we solve it? Yeah, Ethan, uh, the words I just spoke to you, I believe, is is really the answer. Uh, really, uh, Jesus has become real. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing, too, uh, how can you believe if you don't have a preacher, if you don't have uh, somebody to tell you, you know, how are you going to learn something if you don't have a teacher? Uh, the first responsibility uh, for this is found in the word of God in Deuteronomy, where the moms and the dads, the parents, they're supposed to talk to their kids when they lie down. They're supposed to talk to their kids when they rise up in the morning. They're right. supposed to talk to their kids when they're in the way. They're supposed to talk to their kids. No matter what you're doing, you have to talk to your kids all the time on a daily basis. Now, what's kind of happened, the enemies of America know they have to attack God because the way we have our strength is because of God. If David if David thinks he can defeat Goliath without God, he's going to fail. So <laughs> America <laughs> America can't defeat the the giants. It can't defeat the giants without God. And so you look at the children of Israel when they were getting ready to enter the promised land, God gave them commandments. He said, "I'm going to take you to a land that flows with milk and it flows with honey." What does that mean? I'm going to take you to this land that got some fat stuff and got some sweet stuff. We all like ice cream. We (laughs) all like cakes and pies and cookies. It's some sweet stuff and it's some fat stuff. It'll make us fat and it tastes good to our mouth. (laughs) And so he said, when I take you to that land that flows with milk and honey, he said, when you get fat, don't forget me. But before you get into the land, what they decided to do they decided to send out 12 spies. And mm-hmm. so these were leaders and they sent those 12 spies in and they came back with the report. They said, man, everything that God said, it is exactly like God said. And they brought back examples of the fruit. They brought back examples of stuff that was, they said, it's just like God said. They said, but it's one thing, only one thing. We can't, we can't inhabit this land because there's giants in the land. It's impossible. You know, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can uh, conquer these giants. There's no way we can do what God has already commanded us to do. But I know that there's nothing impossible with God. No matter how far this, this, this nation has fallen for God, I know that this land can come back up if he has a few people. Because God can deliver by many or God can deliver by few, and God can even deliver by one. So so we have to, as Christians, always have faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the two people that I try to emulate in my life are Joshua and Caleb, because they came back with the report. They say, yeah, all of, the, all of this is true. And even what these other leaders are saying, yeah, there's giants in the land, but you know what? God is on our side and, and there's more for us than those that are against us because we're fighting a spiritual battle more than a physical battle. So even though they went back into the wilderness 40 years, they all died out there. Joshua and Caleb made it back. And that's how who I want to be like. I want to be like Joshua. I want to be like Caleb. Be like Joshua mm-hmm. and Caleb because it's a spiritual thing. Yeah. It's, it's spiritual, not physical. And so that's the application because it's by faith. It's by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's how we obtain a good report. You know, and one thing I've learned uh, over the years, what is God looking for? Mm. What is God looking for? You know what he's looking for? He's looking for faith. So like when that woman was in the crowd and everybody was thrown in Jesus, he said, who touched me? He said, who, who touched me? And the disciples looked at him and say, what are you talking about? Who touched you? You're getting thrown. I mean, people's hands are all on you. You're getting hit and you're in the middle of a crowd. They're reaching after you. They're touching you. you. Everybody's (laughs) touching you. What do you mean? Who touched me? 
So what God can, he, he recognizes faith and he'll do something for you that other people that don't have faith. And we know the story of Lazarus. Look mm -hmm. at Lazarus, what he did for Lazarus. So there's nothing impossible, you know, and we know all these stories and that's what the Bible is doing is giving us these stories, Ethan and Felicia, so we can grab a hold to them. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's one story for you, maybe it's an, another story for you, but then what happens is we have faith and it's the faith that's going to make it to heaven. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Abraham was a man of faith and I want to be like Abraham. No children. He was an old guy. He said, your seed is going to be like the sands of the sea. That's what's lacking. Yeah. Faith right, is right lacking. Now. Yes. Yeah. We need more faith. Yeah, a lot of time, like right now, the Republican Party, and even though a lot of like conservative Christian say, hey, you know, like it's hopeless. Let's just uh, give up. You know, like the uh, Democratic Party, they're 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 all liars. You know, like last time they stole in the presidential mm -hmm. election, and this time they they still gonna do it. But uh, just like you said. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they how they're gonna do. It doesn't matter what what the evil plan. It it just all does not matter. What does matter is God. Uh, only we just put faith in God, and God knows everything. God knows the plan of the evil. God knows how how we're gonna win. It it's like you said, like those spies when there is oh you know the big giants. No no no, they they have their own reality. They thought what they see is reality, but that's not the reality. The reality is in the God. And when we put faith in the God, we can kill Goliath and we can still go to the promised land, just like Joshua and the and the Caleb. We can do this. We can do this. Is that all things we need is gathering our faith and pray more and praise more and put our own eyes into Lord Jesus. That's all we need to do. And walk the walk, talk the talk, do whatever we need, and the Holy Spirit will be with us. That's all we need to do. Oh, I, I think this is an amazing topic. Right. Because we actually, a, a lot of so-called conservatives uh. give, give themselves excuse when they see something. Like, like for example, the RNC, uh -huh. they brought up a... a, a, a Indian woman. An Indian woman. The Sikh woman to pray. Yeah, to pray to their yeah. God. And then they, he, he, she actually said the name of that. Is that Waka something? Yeah. Wakaka or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then she, 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 and leading all these Christian conservatives in the Republican convention. Yeah, the first day. Like, oh, 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 the bless uh, America. You are the almighty God. And yeah, you are the only... And and we we were actually mad because Donald Trump just got shot in the ear, and then we're like, you can't do this. God just saved Donald Trump, and then uh, you you do this, and then and, and, praising and, the false god. Yeah, and, and then like all the uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, common. They're just like, oh, you are so hard headed. You're such a knucklehead. Okay, it, it's just America is an idea. It's yeah. a freedom of religion. Yeah, it's like, inclusive. It's okay. You yeah. can praise your God and they can praise their God. Yeah. And it, it's okay. It's okay. Some Christians say that. Yeah, so. a lot of Christians and they're, they're self righteous too. Like, I, I'm a Christian. But when I see it, uh, that's a political party. So they can do whatever they, they want. want. <laughs> like basically, they just gave it up. They just gave it up to the devil and mm. without knowing and still think that they're self-righteous and they, they, they lost faith in God. And it, it's our responsibility to affect the world, affect yeah. the world. We have to affect the world, not, not just respond to the world, but we need to affect the world. Mm -hmm. uh, God said, whatever your feet uh, tread upon, whatever you tread upon, I'm going to give you that ground. So one thing I've done, Ethan, in my campaign early on, as I went through these 14 cities, driving, going to areas I had never been to before, I would always say, Lord, give me this ground. I would say, Lord, give me this ground. <clears throat> it's like, God, let me, let me conquer this city. Give mm -hmm. me this mountain. Like I'm sure David was praying, Lord, I, I, I challenge this bear. I challenge this lion. Now I'm going to challenge this uh, giant. Uh, but we have to be uh, talking to God, praying to him uh, every day in that relationship with him, you, we cannot love people 
if we don't love God. Mm. Men, men are selfish. That's just the natural way of life. You're going to self-preservation. You're going to take care of yourself. But to obey God, you got to love God and love your fellow man. Uh, I was looking at this statement. Let me read this to you guys. <clears throat> it talks about the power of one. It says one song can spark a moment. One flower can wake the dream. One tree can start a forest. One bird can herald spring. One smile begins a friendship. One hand clasp lifts a soul. One star can guide a ship at sea. One word can frame the goal. One vote can change a nation. One sunbeam lights a room. One candle wipes out darkness. One laugh will conquer gloom. One step must start each journey. One word must start each prayer. One hope will raise our spirits. One touch can show you care. One voice can speak with wisdom. One heart can know what's true. One life can make the difference. You see, it's up to you. That's the power of one. It, it, it's like the little boy's lunch. One, just one little boy's lunch, just, just one little thing uh, can change everything. Sometimes we seem like we don't have enough. Things are just, it's too big for us. It's too grand. But with God, there's nothing impossible. And we're going to turn this state around. I, I tell people all the time, all the people that left California, the ones that's still here, Ethan and Felicia, we're the warriors. We're the Amen. Fighters. Amen. We're the fighters. We're, that's why we're still here. And Amen. We're all the ones, it's kind of like uh, uh, God talking to Gideon. Man, you got 3,000. But the ones that's afraid, get rid of them. Mm. We're only going to use 300. Just 10% of what we think we need, and we can get it done with faith. It all boils down to faith. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. This is an amazing teaching. Amazing. Yeah. I feel like I've been through a sermon. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, and refreshing great. my spirit. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. We love sermon. Yeah. I'm not saying sermon is a bit. I, we love sermon. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for coming on to the show. And uh, please introduce yourself again and then uh, tell us uh, where is your district. Yeah, uh, Ethan, happy to do so. Uh, my friend, it is nice meeting you and Felicia. I'm happy to call you guys friends now because we've spent some time together. Uh, my name is Ron Edwards, and I'm running for the California State Assembly. It's district number 60. That's Moreno Valley, Paris, Hemet, San Jacinto, Riverside, uh, Beaumont, Redlands, uh, Nuevo. Uh, it also has a uh, homeland and Roma land. Then I have Menifee and as far south as Winchester. Where can we help you? Where can we donate to your campaign? And then uh, where can we sign up for volunteer? How can we help in your campaign? Okay, the headquarters telephone number is area code 909-241-7642. Once again, that number is area code 909-241-7642. My website is Ronald Edwards for assembly.com. Once again, that website is Ronald Edwards for assembly.com. And then my email address is fight apathy. I always talk about fighting apathy because as Republicans, we throw our hands up and we had all these different reasons, kind of like what we were talking about today and having faith. So they got all these reasons why we can't win and we can't accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. So my uh, email address is fight apathy. That's F I G H T. Apathy is A-P-A-T-H-Y, the number 105, then it's at gmail.com. Once again, that's, uh, I'm sorry, fight apathy 105 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you for coming to, on the show. It is our honor to interview with you. Mm -hmm. We actually learned a lot ourselves, and uh, it's amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. We'll see you guys next time.